Hi there, sports fans again. Do you have to do that? I don't do that yes. to you. All right. I do it over here. I don't Stop do it, it in front of you. Stop it. All right. We have a special treat today. We have uh, Dr. What's your name again? Rabbi. Rabbi. <laughs> Rabbi, <laughs> Rabbi Rosenberg. Sorry, I slipped on that one. And uh, we have the Rosenberg Singers, better known as uh, We Have Faith or something. The, what are, what these, are you calling? These are the Keep the Faith Singers. Right on. Tom Luminello, Emily Teller, and Ellen Hardy. <laughs> and, and we're going to sing Who Needs Science, which is a song that I wrote because I felt those who believe that global warming is a hoax needed a song. Don't look at me. Everyone in society needs a voice. You're a meteorologist, you know, Betty, you don't count. Should have been a <laughs> urologist, what the hell? Or a meologist. <laughs> I think you should record that. <laughs> I don't know where, but no, you should. It's very good. Thank you. Thank you. But don't want to overdo it with the thank you, please. I, 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 I remove one of my thank yous. The check's not in the <laughs> mail yet, so relax. All right. So uh, oh, oh, I think we're taking a break now. Or I'm taking a break. No. All right, uh, we're back. No, Will you stop it? All right. I wanted to talk about uh, the severe weather they had in the South on Tuesday, especially. I know that uh, up here in Boston, it's more important to talk about the, uh, let's see, the Red Sox, mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. Celtics, mm -hmm. the Bruins, and Pablo Sandoval's waistline. He only weighs 300 pounds now. You know, <laughs> come on, who cares about all this? All right. They're still doing surveys down in Louisiana. And it's uh, two of uh, the tornadoes may be uh, long track tornadoes, and that's defined as basically as a. Uh, a path of 24 or more miles. That's a, long, that's a long path. And sometimes they get counted twice. And they think one of them was counted twice. So it comes up and then somebody sees it downstream and they think that it's uh, oh, And they think that it's uh, a, a different <laughs> one, but it's not. And there are at least uh, nine, there were at least <laughs> nine tornadoes just in Louisiana. And they, they were four of them were EF2s. Uh, and EF is the enhanced Fujita, Fujita scale. Thank you. <laughs> One more time. Fujita. Fujita. Yes, thank you. <laughs> when the University of Chicago, he was, in 1970, he came up with a scale, the Fujita scale, and then they enhanced it because they changed it to take into account uh, basically what material the building is made out of. You know. All right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So there are, there are six categories, EF0 to EF5. And in EF2, the wind speed is 111 to 135 miles per hour, which would make it rough trying to catch a pop-up. 
all right? And that tornado can go down one side of the street and then uh, miss the other side. It's unbelievable. I think it had a trailer park, one of these. It also hit a, uh, a Gold's Gym. Are we uh, sponsoring them? No. A Gold's Gym and it blew out the wall. There was one near, uh, what, Louis Armstrong Airport, New Orleans. And uh, so there. Then they had them in Mississippi and Pensacola, Florida got involved. And last night, uh, North Carolina, Virginia uh, got involved. And you had one, they had one in Providence? You sure about uh, that? Somewhere in up here, Oh, I somewhere believe. up here. That's good. You're going to be my navigator somewhere on England. another run? Thank you. <laughs> but I know they had the, they had the uh, potential up in the Connecticut or Kennecott. <laughs> All right. So, and today we had a nippy. Yesterday, the warm front came through, and the temperature jumped finally from 36 to 62. That's quite a jump, huh? The wind started howling in about three. Howl. About three. <laughs> you look like one, too, the werewolf. And uh, about uh, three in the morning or so, uh, there was thunder. I woke up, but the person next to me, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, then this morning, it was an Arctic 58. And then I went up to 62, then it got really cold this evening, mm. 55. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Which is, you know, normal high is 41. Mm. We're going to try, there's going to be a it could be a very well a repeat next week with the warm air coming all the way up. All right. Now, we, would you do the, uh, the German thing first? Sure. Then we can go. The German this is, thing. Uh, as some people, you remember Adolf Hitler? Mm hmm. What, <clears throat> what, what did he write? Mein Kampf. The struggle. Yes. All right. It was banned for 70 years. The state of Bavaria, I believe, had the. Would you like to read it? No, I don't because it's too small. Go right ahead. Now we're going to have Nikki read about it. This is serious. Read the headline Mein Kampf, a top seller in Germany. Reprinting Adolf Hitler's autobiography, Mein Kampf, or My Struggle, was long prohibited in Germany, a country that considered the book too dangerous to be read. Now, it's a German bestseller. An annotated version ranks second in nonfiction on the German weekly Der Spiegel's bestseller list, which is considered an authority in German literature circles. German bookstores have not been promoting the book, with some actually hiding it from customers, according to a BBC report in January. Others ordered only a single copy, but online sales picked up and in-store sales soon followed. The German copyright for Mein Kampf was held by the state of Bavaria, which upheld a ban, a ban on reprinting the book for 70 years. The book that is topping the German bestseller list is far different from Hitler's original version. The new 2,000-page edition is heavily annotated with remarks by experts to help put Hitler's comments in context. The, hit, the publishers believe this solution expo exposes Hitler's destructive and violent ideology. Well, I think the publishers are dreaming. What about Today's right-wing movements, which it include the altern Alternative Führer Deutschland, mm -hmm. Deutschland. Deutschland Party, whose leadership recently advocated for shooting re refugees at the German border, have so far refrained from using Hitler's ideology to justify their contemporary goals. So far. So far. This is unbelievable. History repeats itself. Huh? Mm -hmm. it, do, it does often. <laughs> because people don't pay attention. Yeah. Uh, uh, what was it? Napoleon walked into uh, Russia. He got nailed. The Nazis walked in. Oh, we'll get this over by fall, right? Yeah. Mm, all right. It wasn't. A, it was. It was the. They had a brutal winter that year. And they're out there with their summer uniforms. It, it was the uh, uh, the uh, Russian winter that got them, basically. Truman, right. Truman, Truman based strategies for the United States on history. Oh, that, that helps out. It helps out. Huh? Most did often. It. Thank you. You're welcome. Well, thank you. No. So now, uh, would you, you have uh, something else there? Oh, yes, I do have something else. See, I knew you did have something else. You went right. to this. Very smart. Oh. <laughs> you, you feel any time to come in. You, uh, <laughs> you, you went to a meeting. I did. It, in LaRange, uh, Massachusetts, right? Yes, it was. Is that, a, is that up on high or down low? It's on Route 2, isn't it? Yes, it is. Beautiful Route 2. It's in the section of Route 2 that's no longer a divided highway. Oh, exciting. So it's way far out. It's exciting. Way far out. You didn't go to the hairpin turn, did you? No. Oh, that's brutal. There's a couple <laughs> of them, though. Oh, it's exciting. I like the yeah. one where you walk over to New York State and you go, ah, you know yeah, what's coming. Much. <laughs> Jeez. All right, go ahead. All right. right. So. The ma uh, Mass Wildlife is considering um, putting a small, very small colony of timber rattlesnakes on an island in the Quabbin Reservoir. Um, it does have some people 
a little afraid of it. However, there are some facts that some people seem to forget, which is one, they don't reproduce very fast in this area of the country. Especially in public. In anywhere. Oh, <laughs> Modest snakes. Modest <coughs> snakes. We Extremely. Love yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Uh, two, they need a very specific type of hibern uh, area to hibernate in, uh, and that's not found everywhere in the state. And three, the population, there are, there are five rattlesnake colonies in Massachusetts right now. What's the total? You know the total number? Probably less than 200 snakes. I never met a snake I didn't like. If there were not a problem with the rattlesnakes breeding, then there would then they would be expanding where they are now, and they're not. They're why, disappearing why is at an problem? alarming rate. Why is there a problem? People killing them? Or? People killing them. Um, they go out into the roads because two of the two of the big areas that they're in um, are very close to roads and humans, and they are either getting killed by humans or getting killed by cars when they go out in the summer to bask on the road. Cars run them over. It's unfortunate it happens, but what they're trying to do is they're trying to establish a small colony on what what is called Mount Zion in the Quabbin Reservoir, um, which is off limits to, pub to the public. Um, they're saying at most no more than 25 snakes. The, who's saying no, at most no more than 25? Mass Wildlife is saying that come so, time. Well, how many do they have now? Uh, they, well, they're in the state or in, in the, that they're planning on. No, how many they, do they, they have? They haven't released any control. yet. No, how many in their control do they have? So uh, that I don't know, but they have taken some from the sites that are in Massachusetts already, and they're starting to, they want to breed them mm -hmm. and winter them at Roger Williams Park Zoo in Rhode Island and release them, you know, once they're strong enough and big enough to deter most predators, they want to release them onto this island. How big are these snakes? Over two winters, they'll probably get maybe two to three feet long. We can the max that. size is probably four and a half feet long for a male. Like Sammy Davis Jr. Hmm? Like yeah. Sammy Davis Jr., remember? Yeah. yeah. You were quite that short. Oh, what, okay, sorry. He was four foot eight. That's better. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Go ahead. Yeah. No, it's just, it's, it, and personally, I think it's a great idea. Well, you happen to have a few snakes. I happen to have quite a few snakes. Your boyfriend However, is one, right? Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Go no, how many snakes do you currently have? Fifty-two. Well, they're having a wow. party, aren't they? Yes, we are. One more time. They have wow. their own bedroom. Wow. <laughs> they have really their own say, bedroom. They, so there are no there are no clogged toilets in your development. No. Then. No, sir. No, sir. They go right here and rotor rotor it. <laughs> but the the thing that people need to remember is that in Massachusetts there has there have been no rattlesnake deaths since colonial times. I remember. There are bites, but it's usually that's from people stepping mm -hmm. on them. Or see actively seeking them out and touching them when well, they obviously stupid, don't want to be it? touched. <sighs> Preaching to the choir here. But in any case, I think it's a good idea. And no, putting these snakes on Mount Zion will not cause them to reproduce like crazy and swim to shore and kill everybody in a 10-mile radius. Do they have a rabbi on Mount Zion, by the way? I have no idea. Rabbi, would you want to take care of that rabbi? <laughs> <laughs> Well, you, know, you, know, you, know, you know, you've never formally ordained me. What? Don't you know worry that. about it. I'll print something up. All right. You know, Passover's coming. And we have we'll we'll work show. on that for next show. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Do you have something else you wanted to do? You have a, no, you have a review. Okay. You no, have we'll a review. On. No, Give I didn't a... actually do it because I thought we were only going to well, be doing it. What's the name of the place? What, the movie? Yeah. Oh, it's called Hostage. Okay. We have an uh, interview we're going to run. It's uh, a Skype interview I did with uh, Jake Goodman, who lives in near Washington, D.C., he has his own uh, weather blog, and uh, I did this uh, what, about two weeks ago. Okay, so let's run that. Thank you. www.jakesweather.com You put this out every day? Yes, I put out my own forecast every day and newsreel filled with various weather stories. All right. And climate change story. Climate change. Is the climate changing? I had no. Didn't you play a softball yesterday in the palm trees there? No, I wasn't. Oh, he wasn't. All right. Okay. It must have been me. Okay. So I have a few questions for you. How did you get interested in meteorology? Well, simply because it was a. It was a. Well, like a lot of people interested in meteorology, I was three years old and I had, was and I was looking out at the clouds and I thought to myself. This is interesting. Let's dig deeper. 
You did it. I, I did it at seven. And then when I was twelve years old, I thought, why not take this interest to the next level? I created my own website, which is what this is. Mm -hmm. It's weather.com. So uh, you already said what what you can get off of it, right? You got the weather for. Is it the whole country or basically it is Washington? Basically, I forecast only for areas by request. Oh. For it, so basically, people will have to request if they want the forecast for that city. I do forecast for nine different locations every day, hmm. and and that it at least nine locations every day because those are the nine locations. This company out of New York requests that we send data to called My Weather Concierge. We provide forecast solutions for their app, and that is basically why we are so good at this. Where is this company in New York? Well, it's the company headquarters in New York City, but we have like people working out of their houses on for. They're weather forecasters for mm -hmm. other various weather agencies like Jake's Weather Blog really? and other agencies. And they're all over the country. What's the name of the company? My Weather Concierge. Look up our app. Buy it on iTunes. Well, no, it's free on iTunes and Android. You just have to pay 99 cents to subscribe to me. Okay. Uh, so uh, what college are you enrolled in? Oh, I am... Currently at a community college around here called Montgomery College in Rockville, Maryland, but I will be transferring to either Towson University or University of Maryland next this this fall. So Towson, where? That's not Towson State, is it? Towson University or University of Maryland this fall. So what what do you think of the uh, winter? If you take out that big snow, what do you think of the winter so far? I think it's it's really shaping up to be a, an interesting one. We have had tremendous amounts of snow, at least around here. But I got I must say, with the way our, our the, pat, the temperature patterns are, it's quite abnormally warm. Yeah. At least in the beginning, and well, even still, now there it are still is up here. But we're running, what the heck, six and a half degrees above normal per day right. for uh, February. Jan December was out of sight. The January wasn't chilly. And this one, even it's gotten cold now, but it's still way above. It's the, it's the winter that didn't occur. It is. Uh, I would say that it's basically the groundhog was very much so right about an early spring. A little rodent. Yeah, but yeah. Uh, we never we never had winter, so he couldn't be wrong, could he? Yeah. You know. What's it going? to... Go ahead. They make the forecast for him anyway. Yeah. What What about? Uh, well, how cold is it going to be there Sunday? Because here it's going to be below zero in the morning. Well, here it's actually going to be like a couple of degrees above zero, but not, oh. not going below zero. What a shame! Like wind chills here below zero, but not you know. They're going for possibly a record low in Boston on uh, Sunday. Yeah, like I, I hear. I think it was a minus three, four, something like that. I think it is. Plus the wind, it feels great. I thought I'd sit out on the porch and you know, you know. Did you notice the sun angles come up already? Yes. So that the, it snows during the day, and if, when the clouds are thin or just the disk is visible, the snow starts melting. Mm -hmm. Well, just in the sun. Right. Yeah. But and in, in in your where, where you are, there there you guys normally would get more snow. Yeah, last year we did it over. We were way over. But if you add the two together and divide by two, I guess we're around normal. <laughs> Strange way to do it. Right. Yeah, we usually get more. But the Cape been getting more snow. Because they stick out into the ocean. Cape Cod. Right, right, of course. Yeah. Do you still have snow on the ground? We, we don't have any snow on the ground, actually. Well, the warm temperatures have all yeah. made it so that the above freezing temperatures have melted away. So what do you yes. think about the, the, as far as, you know, the climate 
crisis right now in Flint? I think that uh, probably these people should be, uh, it should be kicked out. They probably, maybe they can be brought up on charges. I mean, what the hell are you saving money and knowing that there's lead in there? Right. You know, ridiculous. It's probably not the only place in the country. Now we found money. Yeah, right. But I don't know what they're doing. It's all political now. Don't worry. EPA's on the job. That should clear. Yeah, that almost clear it up. We'll be looking for scapegoats. There's a lot of them. Oh, yes, there is. Yeah. So do you think by the statistics of this winter, do you think there are, we have a chance of having an abnormally high hurricane season? No, I don't know how to do that. I don't. I don't. I, well, I know. I know winter bears on. No, it's spring bears on summer. Fall bears on winter, but I've never heard of uh, winter jump bearing on summer. Well, so I don't. I don't know. We have had a. We've had a. Uh, what the last few years has been. Not, well, last year was nothing. Jeez. May I mention that we also um, at Jake's Weather Blog we have a weather history section that we put out every once a week. I'm sorry, you can't mention that. You already did. Okay. <laughs> what else do you have on there? Stop that. What else do you have on there? Basically, we have a photo gallery of every picture that is weather-related. See that? He agrees. Okay. Well, he's giving me the hook, and uh, I want to thank you for appearing. Now, just I'll let you know when this is coming out. All right? Okay. And good luck at school, and don't do any more hurting of anything, you know? Okay, thank you. Okay. Bye. All right. That takes care of our interview for this week, and now we have mm. the one and only Rabbi... Barry Rosenberg, he has a second song, and I hear that this is really brilliant. Oh, um, you I, have it on bad, I, I have it on bad authority, but go oh. ahead. Anyway, this song is in response to your request yes. about hearing something Bobby Darren sang. Yes. Bobby Darren didn't sing this, but in the late 50s, he might have. Well, when do we call <laughs> him up? It's my song called A Good Time. Biggest question is, did I have fun? I'm here to have a good time. I'm here to have a good time. Don't know about you, but I'm here to have a good time. Did I come on strong? Was I kind of cool? Quiet as a mouse, or did I ramble like a fool? That's how I'd review every rendezvous. Now I ask myself, what did it do for you? I'm here to have a good time. I'm here to have a good time. Don't know about you, but I'm here to have a good time. Looking back, I acted like a dope.
married to Sandra D at the time? Was that? <laughs> Wasn't that who he was married you know, to? No, now that you mention it, I was. Was, uh, okay. <laughs> Good. Good old Sandra. All right, uh, so you have anything else to add because the excitement is killing me. Oh, uh, by the way, can you explain to me what a good time is? I, I don't know anymore. I just don't know. Ed, watch one but, of your shows and you'll have one. Have a good time. Uh -huh. All right, uh, next week we'll be back again. We have three shows in March. I know, please. And uh, we're going to have an interview next week with uh, a Skype interview with Chicago Windler, who's the chief meteorologist in Austin, Texas. All right. So until this time, that time, next time, bye. Who, who wrote this stuff? I don't know. Ed Sullivan is dead, but Cohen isn't. And when it comes to weather, Cohen's smart. As New York as you get, his money's on the Mets, which goes to show that Ed's a Joe who always bets his heart. There's Nikki and there's Audrey for some banter. And can't the Barry chance a pair of songs? There's weather news and shtick, enough to make you sick. You'll be glad you came along.